In this video, I'm going to be introducing the key moment model, which helps us understand what goes on in our communication and interactions with our children. In particular, I'll talk about how often we get hooked by our children and end up communicating in ways that are more harmful than helpful. By being aware of these interactions and their consequences, you can begin to make new, even better choices and learn to interact in ways that are helpful, in ways that are strengthening in the long run. You know, a lot of parenting goes on day to day as we casually interact with our kids. And many of these interactions have to do with just managing life, coordinating schedules, and they pretty much happen without incident. However, some interactions are more significant because of the potential learning that's inherent within them. I call these key moments. A key moment is a situation or event which presents a challenge which can be potentially upsetting and demands a response. We cannot not respond to our key moments. The question is, are we conscious and aware as we respond, or do we just react in a knee-jerk kind of way? Let me give you some examples of key moments. A fifth grader comes home and announces, I hate school and I'm never going back. Or maybe you have a son that refuses to get off the couch and help with chores. A daughter brings home a really bad report card. Or a teenager is home late, way after curfew, and has been drinking. A child dilly-dallies rather than getting ready for school. Or your kids are bickering and arguing every evening at the table, and you're just beginning to feel fed up with it. Or a son throws a fit when you tell him his screen time is over. Or maybe you have a daughter that's pouty and refuses to spend time with the family. Such key moments are important, as I said a little bit earlier, because our children learn lessons depending upon how we respond. We want to learn to respond in positive ways, in ways that help our children learn and grow and take responsibility for themselves. You know, we have key moments every day. Some are minor, and we handle them quite easily. But others are big, at least they seem to be big in the moment. And they trigger, ne trigger negative thoughts, thoughts like, these kids never mind, these kids are lazy, they never think about anybody else, which also leads to negative emotions like worry and anxiety, sometimes frustration and anger, or sadness, even inadequacy. They knock us off balance when they're big, they make us forget our principles. They diminish our enjoyment of our kids. They cause us to react in unproductive ways. So here's a key moment model. It indicates that there are two paths we can take when a key moment occurs. An event occurs and consciously or unconsciously we make a choice about how to respond. If unaware or if strong emotion overrules our reason, we're likely to react out of fear hostility, which leads us into the cycle of weakening behavior. In the cycle of weakening behavior, we either overmanage or we overindulge our children. And as the diagram illustrates, negative and usually unintended consequences flow from these behaviors, ill will, mistrust, sometimes power struggles, low self-esteem, diminishing of personal responsibility, problems are only solved temporarily. Unfortunately, it's all too easy to get cycled into these weakening behaviors which rob our children of their ability to be self-governing and cause them to be externally driven. On the other hand, at this moment of choice, we can decide to respond to a key moment from faith, love, trust. It's not always easy. But as we do so, we interact with our children in ways that are strengthening to them as well as our relationship. The goal is more than getting mere compliance or solving the immediate problem. The goal is building trust and goodwill and enhancing self-worth, helping our children learn to think for themselves and solve problems and take responsibility for their thoughts and feelings and actions. Well, the consequences when we interact in this way are goodwill, self-worth, an increase in personal responsibility and the ability of our children to manage their lives. 
Notice that there are three skill sets at the top of the key moment model. Honesty, empathy, and responsibility. From many years of experience, I've learned that these core skills are at the heart of good communication at any time, but particularly when we're in the middle of a key moment. I'm going to be defining them and teaching you how to use them in upcoming videos. In the meantime, for the purpose of this video, I want to keep exploring what happens during the cycle of weakening behavior. From the key moment model, you can see that there are two types of weakening behaviors. Of course, I've introduced them and we've talked a little bit about them before, but I want to talk about them from a little bit different angle right now. First is overmanaging. We do this in many ways. We lecture our kids, we argue, we criticize, we get mad, we blame, we give advice, we compare, we nag, we threaten. All of these tactics are ways of us taking over and manipulating our kids to get them to do what we want. We use them when we feel fearful and anxious or we lose our trust in their natural goodness and their capability. These tactics either cause our children to become compliant, good boy, good girl, or rebel, bad boy, bad girl. Either way, overmanaging keeps our children from taking responsibility for themselves. Plus, it plants some subtle and harmful messages in their minds. Messages like, you think I'm bad or stupid or inferior. Or they may conclude, you don't care about my feelings or will. Or you just want me to please you. Or you don't trust me to work out problems on my own. Well, the second form of weakening responses uh, to a key moment is overindulging which also has many forms, hovering, overprotecting, sympathizing, giving in, rescuing, flip-flopping on decisions, pleading, bribing. When we overindulge, we give our children too much power or we reward their bad behavior rather than letting them face the consequences and learn responsibility. We're trying to keep them happy, so we end up giving away our own parental authority. And children get messages like, I have to get my way in order to feel okay. Or, limits don't apply to me. Or, someone else will make things better. Or, nobody is more powerful than me. I want to give you an example of a key moment. Let's watch two parents respond to their son in weakening, although different ways. So, John Carlson was doing well doing well in school until he got into Mrs. Bowman's eighth grade English class. Well, John failed the class, or he was in the process of failing the class, and he came home feeling despondent and afraid to tell his mother what had happened. Mrs. Carlson knew something was wrong. She probed John about what was going on and finally heard his forced and halted confession. She said, that teacher should not have done that to you. She is unfair. Her expectations are simply not realistic. Besides, you're a good student. Don't you worry. John, I'm going to go in and I'm going to talk to Mrs. Bowen and see what I can do. Well, how common is this kind of reaction? Is mother sympathy helping or hurting? What is John learning? And what kinds of habits are forming between him and his mother? Well, John's father came home a few hours later. When his wife told him what was happening, Mrs. Mr. Carlson wasn't quite as sympathetic. He rushed into John's room making the following declarations. How in the world can you bring home an F in English? Your brother's never got F's in any subject. I've been telling you, your priorities are messed up and I've had enough of it, young man. No more Xbox or TV until further notice. And by the way, you're grounded. You can't go out with your friends until I know that your grade has improved. Now what's happening? What are the consequences? Is this helpful or is this harmful to John in the long run? No doubt John's parents have good intent. They love their son. They want him to succeed. In fact, it's usually because we care deeply that we step into parenting traps that are weakening. We're doing our best to get our kids to do what we believe they should be doing but sometimes without realizing the long-term consequences. Remember the definition of insanity? Doing the same thing and expecting a different result? 
Well, we have to learn to interact and communicate differently if we want different results. So in the next video, I'm going to be talking about the cycle of strengthening behavior, and in particular, the skills of empathy and honesty and responsibility. At least I'm going to be defining those skills for you and helping you understand how they are alternatives to overmanaging and overindulging. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.